I'm Tom Reinhardt, Deputy Director for Architecture at George Washington's Mount Vernon, and we're standing in the newly restored new room. The restoration took over a year of intensive research and work in the room, and one of the things that is most prominent that you'll see when you come into the room are some changes in our paint colors. A round of paint analysis was carried out by Susan Buck of Williamsburg, and we've been able to refine the paint colors down to exactly the colors and the types of paints that George Washington used in the room when it was completed in 1787. One of the most prominent colors is this green, this light green known as green verditure, which is a pigment made from the mineral malachite. And although it is paint, it is painted on wallpaper. And during the restoration, we removed wallpaper that was installed in the 1980s, put up a more accurate and more authentic version of that wallpaper, and painted it here in Mount Vernon before we hung it um, in the room. Uh, also, an another green color in the room is the dark green that you see in the friezes above the doors, around the Palladian window, and in the frieze of the cornice. This dark green is a different copper pigment known as a verdigris, and it is a very coarse-grained pigment. And the, uh, the third color, which is prominent in the room, is this buff color that you see on the chair rail, and on the architraves and below the chair rail. That buff was a color that Washington called buff inclining to white. And what we found in our investigation is that it was slightly darker than had been thought before. So these three colors come together to bring the room together in this very neoclassical way. Um, these colors highlight um, some decoration which is used in the room, uh, a very cutting edge technology for 1787 known as composition ornament. You see it around the door frames and window frames, you see it on the chair rail and baseboard, and on the, uh, the panels of the Palladian window. This composition was a putty that was pressed into molds to create very detailed ornament that was then glued to the surfaces. It is painted a uh, bright whitewash that really um, pops out from that dark green and from the buff. Another very significant change is the color of the cove, which is the curving part of the ceiling at the very top of the wall. Um, in 1980, it was thought that this cove was green. Paint analysis done then showed it was green. In our investigation, we found no evidence at all that there was green paint, and we looked at, uh, extensively around the cove and could not find any. But what was found was that there were three layers of whitewash and then a layer of gray paint. We knew that gray paint was put in in 1869, so that told us that all of those layers of whitewash underneath that gray paint were the original layers that Washington put in. So we returned the cove to its original white color. Um, on the opposite end of the room, the floor also has revealed some secrets to us. Uh, over the last century, uh, there'd been a debate about the floor, about whether it was the original floor or whether it had been replaced um, in the 1880s. Careful um, survey of, of documentation in the Washington papers, as well as a painstaking study of the floor, um, looking at the floorboards and the nails and nailing patterns, we created a map which charted over 2,500 nails and nail holes in the floor. And all of this evidence together um, has confirmed for us uh, that the floor is indeed the original that Washington installed in 1787. Um, it was produced from southern yellow pine board, 24 feet long, over a, a, an inch and a half thick, and uh, that were harvested from the eastern shore of Maryland and brought to Mount Vernon um, in the spring of 1787. So um, from top to bottom, the new room has a brand new look, and we hope that you'll come out to Mount Vernon and see it and enjoy it for yourself. Thanks.